Season 3 is here and with it comes the return of a bunch of new content as well as the old fan favorite Warzone map, Rebirth Island. But this video is completely dedicated to the undead, giving you every single working glitch in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies Season 3. So if you appreciate the hours of work that I put into this video, consider subscribing. Thank you for 17,000 subscribers to all of my current supporters. Leave any and all questions below. And last but not least, make sure that you use the YouTube video chapters below so you can skip to the glitches you are interested in and skip over the ones that you're not. And with all of that said guys please enjoy what's going on guys wesley here and today i'm going to be showing you guys how to do the tombstone duplication glitch in season two reloaded now with today's video i'm hoping to answer all of your questions with the tombstone duplication glitch i guarantee you guys that if you do exactly what i do it will work on all platforms every single time so that you can bring in all of the rare items that you want into the game while keeping your insured weapon your lethals your tacticals and everything else I will be showing you the three most popular routes to do the tombstone duplication glitch. Now people are very opinionated about these routes, it's actually kind of funny. I'm going to be showing you guys the actual data on it because what would a video of mine be without all the most up to date information that I can find right this second. So if there's any other updates I will put out another video, but just know this is the most efficient way to do the tombstone duplication glitch and it works every single time. I'm also curious, where are your stash limits at? Mine's at 70, I was at 99 by the last video it's been less than a week and i've already minus 20 so i'm going to run out very soon i'm curious where yours are at make sure you comment that down below but let's get into the video so the first thing that you want to do is obviously break down your existing tombstone that's not a requirement but i always say it is because i want you to grab all of the rarest items and set up your rucksack to the best of your abilities so once you have all the items that you want to duplicate, you're going to want to make sure that you have either 3000 essence or 1000 essence as well as tombstone soda. So I already had a tombstone soda can. You always want to make sure that you have it in your large rucksack that will save you 2000 essence every single game. So make sure you do that. Also, just a footnote, if this is your first time doing the tombstone glitch or you don't currently have one, put the tombstone soda in your large rucksack and then go do a mission and purchase tombstone before you actually do the glitch, right? That way when you extract you'll extract with that duplicated one and then you'll have a backup each time that's why I had a tombstone soda as well as an extra one left over at the start of this game so let's get into the three methods or paths that you can actually do this glitch with and I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do them most efficient so the first method I'm going to be showing you guys is very simple to do. You only have to do a couple of mantles. However, it is very close to the edge of the map and it's very easy for newcomers or just simply people who just want to chill and play the game very easily. So number 23 here is the one that we will be using. You can review the code and pause the video if you need to, but it's located in the southeast corner of the map. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase this portal and just simply walk through it to do a demonstration for you guys. When you come through this portal, you will run for the edge of the map. You are aiming for the the out of bounds line and you want to go there as fast as possible now i actually analyzed the distance between the spot and the edge and so you can see here it's about 70 meters to the edge so we're going to compare all of these real quick and it'll only take a couple of minutes to actually do so but if you actually exit over to the left here i would say it's more about 66 because as long as you're not impeded right i could run straight into that into that uh that marker and i would actually be able to do so right uh, obviously mantling some stuff in the meantime but the second method I'm going to be showing you guys is my personal favorite so number 24 here actually right north of that location is what I like to use and what a lot of people like to use but the, the third method in my opinion is the most popular but this is my personal favorite so let's actually enter that code now so once I've entered that code, I'm obviously gonna go through the portal, I'm gonna purchase it. And so here's why it's my favorite method. So first of all, you spawn at the top of a water tower. Now it's important to remember that you need uh, you need to have quick reflexes for this one, in my opinion, for it to actually be worth the time. But sometimes also below, just as a heads up, you can get a mercenary camp literally on top of this thing. Like they're all on the ground around you. So what you wanna do in this method is you turn right immediately, pull your parachute as soon as you can and hold forward so that you fly towards the edge of the map and you actually get there much quicker because if you think about it if I'm walking to the edge of a map versus flying flying with your parachute is obviously faster so here I am using this for the dark ether duplication glitch which you can find in the description down below you can see I do get a mercenary camp here but I'm able to fly to the edge of the map before they even notice me and then I just simply run out of bounds right so let's go over the third method and see how that compares so this is the most popular method it is number 19 
19 here and is located on the southwest corner of the map. It is right by the water. This is a beach location. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and enter this code now and let's check out how good it really is. So once you've made it through on this one, you wanna turn right and sprint straight. That's it. This is one of the simplest methods and it's the most popular for a reason. It is very, very direct and very easy to do. You'll notice it's 70 meters away, but that first method that I showed you had two mantles. Now, I haven't really like obviously tested timing and stuff. I didn't take out a stopwatch or anything like that as far as the method one versus this method because remember, they're about the same amount of distance. The other method's actually four meters less whenever you account for the shortest distance but there's two mantles so I haven't actually like tested if that's slower than a full sprint with energy right so I you know I, I couldn't tell you for sure but what I can tell you is that that method method three as well as method two are my two personal favorites now this portion of the video is completely dedicated to doing the tombstone duplication glitch efficiently. I'm going to show you guys, if you have trouble with timing, make sure that you watch this portion of the video. I'm going to go through all of the steps now so that you don't have any issues as well as maybe some of you guys who do it well, maybe you'll improve a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and enter number 24, my personal favorite code. You want to turn your back to the portal and purchase as you mantle over. Now on console, again, you're going to have to hold the use button to actually do it. So what I would suggest just is that you hold it and then mantle so follow the path that I do this is my personal favorite path you can also go up the stairs it's slightly faster but before you touch the bad signal portal here where that timer shows up on the left you don't actually have that much about timing to worry about a lot of people don't have issues with that the portal will stay open for almost an entire minute but once you go ahead and activate the dark ether rift I completely messed up here just as an example of how late that you can be watch how the portal stays open open for me. So what you want to do is follow the path that I did back and make sure you climb up the stairs, cut over just like this. That'll save you about half a second and run through the portal. Now, this is my personal favorite spot. Again, jump off, use your parachute, make your way to the edge of the map. Now on PC, you can accept at one second, but on console, again, you're going to have to hold the button. So be careful whenever you're doing that. I would suggest accepting the vote on console whenever you switch from two to one. Now comes for the most important part. So this is going to be how you keep your insured weapon. So what you're going to want to do is you want to enter exactly at six seconds. I suggest getting all the way to the edge right before it triggers and then sprinting in whenever it hits seven. You can see here, it takes me about a full second to get to the edge. It immediately turns to six. And at that point, you are good from that timing perspective. The last step to this glitch is very easy, but there is a specific place I want you to quit on all platforms. It is very simple. So you're going to see eliminated a lot of people on console quit then I don't suggest that I suggest that you quit as soon as this dark ether zombies symbol shows up at the top left that is your signal you can wait a full second in between actually quitting versus you know doing it immediately when you see it it doesn't matter that portion of the timing is not hard to hit the six seconds is the most important portion okay so remember that if you are watching this video hit the six seconds. Now, if you hit five or seven, you'll still get your items, but sometimes you will lose your weapons. It all depends. Remember how long a second actually is, guys. And when you're getting down to one second versus another being too long or too short, just keep in mind, yes, if you miss this by half a second or a full second or whatever, if you see five, four, three, two, whatever, you may actually lose your weapon, but you shouldn't lose any of your items as long as you see the eliminated symbol. Now, depending if you're on console or a PC, you just need to force quit the game. You can look that up on your respective consoles. On PC, it's obviously just Alt F4, but when you come back in, you're going to have your insured weapon, your lethal, your tacticals, your field upgrade, as well as all of the items that you intended to originally duplicate. So that's pretty much it, guys. Now, when you go back into the game, just remember your tombstone will be at the graveyard and you can repeat this over and over again, share items with your friends and enjoy. If you have any questions, leave them down below, but thank you. Showing you guys the updated method for the unlimited essence glitch. Now in this video, I'm not only going to outline a new method in order for you to gain the essence in order to duplicate, I'm also going to show you the most efficient way that you can actually duplicate, allowing you to save time buying Tombstone and how you do this actual glitch. Now if we can, I'd appreciate if you guys would like the video. Let's see if we can get this video up to 100 likes. I took so long to record this content because I wanted to make sure I had every single video angle and I could explain every single thing to you guys. So let's get into this glitch now. 
Now jumping right into things, I want to make sure that you guys are prepared and that no one makes any mistakes because I've noticed a lot of people have trouble with either the tombstone duplication glitch or the unlimited essence glitch. Now I'm going to explain to you exactly what you need to do step by step real quick. It will not take that long, but I guarantee you that this method and the way that I do things is faster than the way that you're doing it right now. So let's get into it. Now, as for the requirements to this glitch, I'm going to list them out here now. And some of these aren't absolutely required, but I'm listing them all as requirements because this video is on the fastest method for unlimited essence. Now, once you've gathered all of those items on at least one player, you can do this just for one player and someone else can go around the map just doing whatever they want or just hang out and sit around like my alt account. You're going to want to make your way over to tier three. Now, I suggest that you have at least a pack a punch level one scorcher. That way you can do the Superman glitch. Some people call it a feature. The point is, is that you can fast travel around the map very, very quickly. And what you're going to notice is I actually grab a spore contract and cancel it. So this is going to be my first tip of the day other than the scorcher. So first of all, if you don't see a bounty contract, all you need to do is go grab a separate contract, any kind and cancel it. And it's going to regenerate a contract in the tier three zone. There should always be at least one contract. So it's easy to find a bounty. Now the second tip to this glitch and also one of the requirements is the flamethrower. Now this attachment is called the Jack Purifier. If you want to know how to unlock it, go check out my video on that. It will be in the description down below. Long story short, it is an armory unlock and you need to make sure that you have it. Now if you triple pack a punch a weapon that has it on, then you can kill these bounties in a matter of seconds. You saw how quickly I actually deleted a mega abomination. You'll see here that was me actually canceling a contract and the bounty showed back up. So let's see how fast I actually can get a kills here. So I've gone ahead and grabbed it and then in about like 10 seconds I'm over to my actual target now i got lucky during this game and i was able to get a lot of lesser enemies such as mimics or disciples so it's very very easy to do these contracts and they pop off very quickly now if you have again that triple pack a punch flamethrower it is an absolute insta kill in tier three it is so easy to use now in between each one of these contracts you need to make sure that you are going to an ammo cache why because the flamethrower can only be refilled using an ammo cache, not even ammo on the ground. Now that may seem like a huge inconvenience. It is absolutely not. It will take you about 20 seconds to actually refill your ammo in between these contracts. So you should just be firing off and going left and right over and over again, making sure that you are knocking out these contracts, canceling existing ones if you don't see a bounty contract and then grabbing the bounty contracts. It took me about 30 minutes to get about 150,000 essence. That is in no time. That is super easy. It's easily the fastest way because keep in mind, each time that I'm doing this, let's just presume it's the minimum every time. I'm getting 10,000 essence. So that means I only need to do 15 contracts. And while that sounds like a lot, it is actually extremely easy. So once you get that 150,000, go ahead and make your way over to your friend. Now, in this case, again, I have an alt account, so it is super easy. I just had him hide in this crane. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to share all the essence that he has with my main account. Now, the purpose of this is because obviously on my main account, I am prepared. But one thing that I do wanna point out is I have a large rucksack in my rucksack, as well as a tombstone soda can. Now, the large rucksack is kind of worthless. I'm gonna explain why in a second, because a lot of people will think using this method, it's actually useful. I highly suggest that you just forego it all together, especially if you have all of your crafting schematics, right? Like if you have your gold schematics and things of that nature, I highly suggest that you don't even waste your time with it. However, with the tombstone soda, I highly suggest that you do bring it. So what you're going to do is make sure that you have tombstone that you purchase from the machine on your main character, or let's say player one, they go down and they plead for help. Now make sure that you have the tombstone soda can in your rucksack at this point. Otherwise, you just need to make sure that you have all of the essence from your entire team consolidated. In this case, again, it's about 160,000 for me. And the reason for that is because what we're gonna be doing right now is I'm actually duplicating the items right now. If you don't know what the unlimited essence glitch is, this is the portion of the glitch where it actually glitches out. This is absolutely not a feature. I'll always have those stray people say that this is a feature. You're telling me it's a feature that I can double 150,000 essence? Like that is not, that's not a feature. But anyway, so what you wanna do is make sure that you've pled for help. So you give up, plead for help, and then have your friend pick you up. Now what, at this point, you can dump everything that you have. 
Nothing that you have on your player once you've gone down and pleaded for help matters. You could play out the game if you want. You're going to have to end the game in a certain way, but go ahead and share the tombstone soda, get your friend to drink it, and they're going to go down and repeat the same exact steps that you just did, right? So now they, they have 160,000 essence. They go down, plead for help after they've drank this tombstone soda can all right so they don't actually have to go to a machine they could go sit in a corner the whole game while you're gaining this essence but they need to go down and then plead for help now at this point once you've both pled for help here's what you're going to do you're going to go down and you're going to fully die now you're going to lose your insured weapon so i highly suggest in this first game that we're still in right now you make sure that you get all of the essence that you need. Now, in my opinion, that number is 150,000. So if you have 150,000 essence like I have, then you are good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go down. Now you don't need your essence or your items or whatever. I could have dropped everything and gone down at this point. You're gonna give up and just wait for the plea for help timer to run out. So again, you went down, pled for help, got picked back up while having tombstone and then you just simply die to leave the game. So once we've actually left the game, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to that area. Now, this is just an example. I just wanna show, yes, you lose everything that you have as well as your insured weapon. So just know that for this very first game. At this point, you don't need to bring anything into the game. In fact, I would highly suggest that you don't. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pick up all of my stuff. I went ahead and applied the large rucksack but you'll notice that now it's gone from my rucksack. So that's why it's worthless, right? Because any subsequent games, you're gonna either have to go to a buy station in tier three and buy a large rucksack so that you can either put it in your rucksack or just simply apply it so that you can hold a large rucksack full of items, or you're gonna have to do something alternative. So I would highly suggest that you don't do that. Just take a small rucksack worth of items into the game if you wanna duplicate items as well. This is more about the essence and we all know that that is more important anyway because ultimately you can craft items you can't craft essence so here i am repeating the steps you can go back for the more detailed explanation if you want it but as you can see i have tombstone soda i went down and pled for help and gave my friend all of the essence now i'm going to give him the tombstone soda he's going to repeat the steps you could see that he pled for help. Again, I highly suggest that you leave before you even go down for the first time in each game because what it's gonna do is it's going to allow you to know when they've actually fully pled for help because if you pick them up before they plead for help, then you will actually lose that tombstone. So each time that you repeat this process, you're actually going to be doubling your essence. You can see at the bottom left of the screen, you will go down and I have 300,000 and then I'm gonna pass it over to my friend and he's gonna go down. Now you may have noticed I did this twice. That was because, again, like I said before, I messed up all my pleading. So it actually took me four games. If you don't mess up, it takes you three games. So just know that whenever you go down, you go down and plead for help, then you get picked up and then you go down and die. So go back and make sure you follow those steps. But well, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you 900,999 essence in a matter of three games, because what you're gonna be doing is you're going to gain 160,000 or 150,000 in essence. You're gonna double that to 300 in the first game because obviously you're both going to die with 150. Then the next game, you're gonna double 300K each. And then the next game, you're gonna double 600K each. And you're gonna have some essence that you're gonna to have to leave on the ground. So if you in today's video, I'm not only going to be showing you guys how you can do the solo tombstone duplication glitch with no money whatsoever. I'm also going to be showing you how you can do it at every corner of the map. That's right. You no longer need to do bad signal with this glitch. You may know about the new blood burner method, but I guarantee that you have not seen all of these locations in this video. It's a very simple guide, but I'm going to be going through all the details for you so that you have no issues with this glitch whatsoever. And in my opinion, if you have trouble with timing as well with the solo tombstone duplication glitch, this method is for you so i want to know down below what items do you always store in your tombstone i really am interested to hear what you guys have and me personally i love to bring a scorcher pack a punch crystal tombstone soda ether blade dog bone and probably a ray gun case as well just because i always love the ray gun and just that play style right so make sure you leave that comment down below i'm really interested to hear what you guys like to bring i know everyone likes to bring slightly different stuff so there are some required items to this glitch obviously so we're going to go over that now so typically speaking what you want to do is make sure that you have a backup of the items now to do so you simply just do the solo tombstone duplication glitch with the bad signal portal if you want to duplicate two blood burner keys 
keys so i would highly suggest if you're doing this glitch multiple times have two blood burner keys for the very first time that you do this glitch the reason is you need a blood burner key in your tombstone as well as one in your inventory going into the game so typically speaking what you would want to do is get your inventory completely set up and don't use a single item in your first game right and then go and do the bad signal tombstone duplication glitch which you can find in the description down below that will create a backup of the items alternatively you could have all of your items in your tombstone or whatever you have right as long as you have a blood burner key in your inventory and you find the existing blood burner on the map or get one from someone else that is also fine so generally speaking again you just need a backup blood burner so that you can actually store it in your tombstone pretty simple right so there's one item requirement here now highly suggested items obviously a tombstone soda so that you don't have to actually purchase tombstone otherwise nothing else is required so what we're going to do is i'm going to show you all of the locations for this glitch but first i want to show you a cool trick with the blood burner now if you didn't know about this then i will be able to explain it to you it's a really cool feature if you do this will only take 30 seconds so just give me a minute to explain it to people but as you can see here if you drive the blood burner out onto water and get off of it it will teleport back to land however if you look at the blood burner when you get off of it and immediately get back on as you'll see me demonstrate here twice so just make sure that you practice that a couple of times before you do the actual glitch but let's get into the locations now so first of all i've seen a couple of updated videos and i put that in quotes of a better location for the tombstone glitch now the best place to do it is in the northeast of the map but i don't suggest that you do it in this area right here i actually suggest that you do it in the original location i'm not sure why people are saying that it's faster maybe it's like a second or two faster but the original location is much easier so that's the only location that i'm going to be going over as far as the northeast goes so let's let's look at that now now following the path that I do, you will be able to find this location pretty easily and you'll probably recognize it from the bad signal tombstone glitch. This is the best spot to do this glitch in my opinion. So players who have trouble with timing or just simply want a laid back gameplay experience like most of us do will find this one to be the best. So first of all, this big rock here, you just step out, you have no mantles to do or anything. And then this patch of seaweed is where you're going to start. So it's very simple. What you want to do is park your blood burner there or spawn it there, whatever you want to do, drive out onto the water, get off and get back on, and you will be teleported back to the patch of seaweed. Extremely simple. You run to the right, you are closer than you do in bad signal. This is definitely faster than bad signal as far as the timing getting to the out of bounds line so it is super super easy to do in my personal favorite so let's follow the path that i do to get to countermeasures now while you're driving this path you want to make sure you don't touch any land i'm going to show you this full clip right here just so that you can actually see me physically doing it after this i'm not going to show you the entire time me driving i don't want to waste your guys time this tutorial will be very much to the point so make sure you watch the whole thing because i will have all the explanations for all the other locations and why some of them are actually faster than this one in a little bit so when you get here you want to park right here next to this rock very very simple and start running over towards the countermeasures portal so it's very simple to actually get here but it's a little bit dangerous so i highly suggest that you either have gold plates or you just use a scorcher like i do here very very simple it will kill a couple of seconds sometimes it's actually faster to run but if you know how to use the scorcher well then you can do this a little bit quicker so what you want to do is hop back on your ride and then hop off and hop back on and you will teleport like i said straight to the seaweed and then you can see here i literally have 10 seconds to accept and i'm at the edge of the map that means i have like 20 seconds probably total at that point because 10 plus 10 to actually do this so all you want to do is just simply step out at six seconds this is the simplest tombstone glitch that i've seen since the new portal and you know everything like that since we've had to change how we actually do this glitch it's been so simple for so long but this just up that to another level so where you want to quit is whenever you get to dark ether zombies right there on the screen you should see eliminated but if you don't see eliminated come up just simply listen for the sound so let's get into the next location for this next location we're going to be going to the northwest of the map now this location is very quick to do and i highly suggest it but let's get into what it takes 
I'm actually right north of the beach right here. You can actually see I'm a little higher elevation. And all you wanna do is just drive off quickly towards the water. Now you saw I kinda of clipped the beach there, but even so, when I get off and get back on, you'll notice I end up back right near the edge up at the top. So super useful spot, and we're gonna test it out and see if it works well. So what you wanna do is simply drive off and drive onto the water. And you don't wanna to touch land while you drive over towards countermeasures. Now again, if countermeasures is not selected as your mission, or you don't have it fully completed, then it will not show up on your map. So make sure that you have it selected. But once you make it to this area, you want to go to this spot on the beach. And it's super easy to get to. And what you want to do is simply drive up near this rock right about here. So I'm going to drive up and for whatever reason, this does not count right here. So I stop the vehicle and get off, I would suggest decoy grenades, a scorcher or just plates. But long story short, you want to activate the portal and get back to your bike. So what you want to do is back it up into the water, do the trick that I told you to practice and you will teleport towards the edge of the map. Now, for whatever reason, I got flung up in the air this time, but I tested it a few more times and it did not happen. So just know that. But long story short, you want to accept the contract. And then whenever it's at the six second mark, which you can roll back and watch it multiple times if you need, you want to run into the out of bounds line. And what's going to happen is you're going to get eliminated while it's teleporting you to the dark ether, but it won't count. So what you want to do is close the game on dark ether zombies here. If you're on Xbox, it's pretty simple. You just close the game and PS5, you can look that up. On PC, you would just do Alt F4. So the next area of the map that we're gonna do this glitch in is in the southwest here. So I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly what you need to do for this particular location if you happen to be in this part of the map towards the end of the game. So what you wanna do is you essentially wanna spawn your blood burner up top and drive towards the water. But what I noticed is if you don't land kind of closer to the beach on this one, you will end up under the water. But I have not been able to permanently sustain, you know, driving underwater. So if I'm gonna look into that glitch more and see, it's kind of useless, but I will look it up but if you land kind of near the rocks here but still in the water it will count so watch i'm going to actually follow the same path i'm going to get off here i'm going to use a scorcher for this game just because i happen to have one and i'm going to go back to my bike back up and we're going to get off and get back on now what happened on this one was i spawned way up in the air for some reason i think because i'm on the ledge but as you can see this one was way easier i mean guys you just have to walk like two steps towards the edge now i almost messed up the timing with actually leaving the game uh or rather walking out whenever it gets the eliminated simple but same exact thing walk out at six seconds and quit on dark ether zombies so this next location is actually the closest to the out of bound zone that I've found. So this is very, very easy to do, but it can be a little bit more complicated than the other. So essentially you're going to drive off and drive towards the water. Now, again, hitting the land right there for some reason does not count. So when I get off and get back on, I end up on top of the hill. Now I found this one was a little bit troubling. If you don't do it exactly the way that I do it, then you may actually end up halfway down the hill. But the good news is, is you never have to accept the contract until you're absolutely sure. And with all of these methods you are going to end up near the out of bound zone well before whenever you do the actual bad signal version of this tombstone glitch so where you want to line yourself at is kind of towards the west of that island right there just on top of the hill very easy to do and it's very easy to actually drive to this location then you're just simply going to drive forward like so and you're going to drive off this big rock here and that's it and so once you actually hit the ground and hit the water you will be able to go towards countermeasures now, once you've made it to the water, you want to follow your way out of this little inlet here. So be careful because there's a lot more land that you can hit, but it's pretty simple. Make your way over to countermeasures. I actually almost die here, so be very careful. Again, unlike me, I'm a little bit brazen whenever I'm recording glitches. So make your way back to the bike. You're going to back up into the water as usual and hop off and hop back on. And that teleports you literally to the edge of the map. This one I enjoyed the most because it is the fastest. I had 12 seconds just to accept before I actually actually started the countdown. And so this is definitely the easiest one as far as timing goes because you end up on the edge of the map, but driving that bike off the cliff is a little bit harder. So again, that first method that I showed you guys is my favorite, but go ahead and quit when you see dark ether zombies and you are good to go going to be going over what's going on with the acquisition stash glitch just an explanation as well as what not to do now there's been a method going around with forcing your items into your acquisition stash using a sigil there's also been a patch for the tombstone duplication glitch so make sure you check that out at the top right in the description down below but this method using the sigil has been screwing people a ton also, if you haven't already, make sure you comment down how big your acquisition stash is. I'm really curious to see where everyone got stuck. Mine, I actually got up to 100. I used to have over 200. 
but I used most of my items trying to record videos for glitches. So you can see here I actually have 99 out of 100 and I'm actually able to store a singular item into my stash before I go back and try another item. Now there's a reason for these things to happen, all right? Some of the items that are in your acquisition stats currently for whatever reason are counting as legit. There are some that are not. The point of the matter is, is that wherever you're at in your acquisition stash, you likely will not be able to exceed. Now, if you're able to do that using a sigil, I'm gonna tell you in a second why that's a bad idea and why you should not be doing it. You can go ahead and do it yourself if you want, but there's a reason why people are losing items in their exfils. Whenever you go to exfil normally, you may have noticed, most of you honestly may have noticed that a couple of items or a singular item will disappear from your rucksack. There is an actual reason for that, and I will go through that today. So you can actually see here on my acquisition stash on this video, I have 11 out of 10. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through my acquisition stash and select items until I figure out which one is which. So you saw I just switched for the VR, and went back up to 12, I took out this crystal and it went back to 11. Then I searched through and did it again. Typically whenever you swap items, they're towards the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and try a couple at the back just to make sure that none of them are there. Typically, again, they will be at the top of the list. But once I go ahead and try this a few times, I'm gonna notice that another crystal actually is counted. So you'll see this dog bone doesn't count. Let's go ahead and try something else. Maybe I go to the back and I try this crystal. No, this 12 out of 10. I have over 100 items, so this may take you a couple of minutes. But once you find it and figure it out, you'll notice that it actually counts down towards 10. Now, what your goal here is, is to actually get it down to 10 out of 10. Because when it is 10 out of 10, your items will not disappear. And you can hold me to this. When you go in the game and you do the tombstone duplication glitch like I have in the other video, make sure that your stash is down 10 to 10. Now, if you go and you normally exfil and take your items out to then take them back in and do the tombstone again, you will notice that none of your items will disappear. But if it is above 10, then they will definitely disappear. You will have a minimum of one item disappear depending on how much you're over 10. So for example, if you're at 12 out of 10, two items will disappear every single X fill. And again, you can hold me to that. You can look it up, guys. Just keep watch and be aware. And that's pretty much it, guys. You can actually drive underwater in Modern Warfare Zombies, that's right. With this glitch, you can be completely invincible to all zombies, including abominations. And there's actually a cool twist to this glitch that I'm going to show you guys at the end. Now this glitch will be included with my all working glitches compilation that's going to come out for season 3 so make sure that you're subscribed to keep up with all the latest and greatest glitches. Now to do this glitch you will need the blood burner. Now you can either use a key or find it on the map. You need to hit the water at a particular angle for this glitch to work properly and I search all over the map for the best spot. Now the best place to do this glitch is by the countermeasures portal in tier 3. You go there, drive off the cliff at full speed, and you will get this glitch every single time. You will fall under the water. Now to get out of this glitch, you simply need to get off the blood burner and get back on quickly and you will be teleported back to land. But the cool trick that I wanted to show you guys as a part of this glitch, you can actually switch seats and still fire your scorcher so you can kill zombies while underwater. Like and subscribe for more Modern Warfare 3 content and I'll catch you in the next one. A new method was discovered for the Easter egg bypass glitch and I'm going to be showing you all exactly what you need to do in order to do this glitch every single time that you come into the game. You can do this solo or with teammates and I highly highly suggest that you tie this in with your tombstone duplication glitch. Now this video will be included in my latest glitch compilation. Now I post these after every single patch. Season 3 is coming up. Make sure that you're subscribed in order to keep track of all the latest and greatest glitches. So previously you would lay down to access those boxes. This method has changed. So here we are in the main menu of zombies. So let's go over the requirements for this glitch and then we'll go over the actual steps. So first of all, you can see I have a blood burner key in my inventory. Now I'm gonna go ahead and craft a second one. I highly suggest that you have two blood burner keys for the first time that you do this glitch if you plan on doing it multiple times. If you're just doing this just to check it out and move on with your life, feel free to just have one blood burner key. But what you want to do is make sure that you have an extra one that you can then tombstone glitch. So if you don't know how to do that method, make sure you check out both the videos that I have in the description down below. 
So here we are in game and again you can do this solo or with teammates so in this case I'm tying this in with my tombstone duplication glitch and I'm kind of farming I rare items as well as essence so what I'm going to do is I'm first going to go over to my tombstone here and make sure that I have all of my items and then I'm going to show you guys exactly where you need to go from here because typically a lot of us are doing the tombstone duplication glitch especially if you're watching this video on my channel then you 100% are likely doing the tombstone duplication glitch most people who watch my channel are and so i'm going to be showing you guys exactly how to get to the location from the graveyard so i'm going to go ahead and grab all of my items making sure that i replace whatever i have duplicates of because obviously most of the time i will have my ether blade once you've done that we're going to go ahead and head over to the location so the location that we're actually going to go to is in the southeast region of the map. So there's this little tunnel right here. It's a cave that's at the end of this little mansion. Now, I'm going to speed up the video for you guys so that I don't waste any of your time. This video is going to be very quick, so make sure that you watch for all the details. So we're going to go over here, and this is where the cave is actually located. You're going to run in. And what you're going to notice is there's a little bit of an inlet there as well as a doorway back there. So what you're going to look for is this little lamp post right here. So go ahead and walk up to it. And what you want to do is just simply walk forward while you're firing your scorchers. So you're going to see me do it right here. I'm going to shoot myself up and hold forward and I'm going to get stuck here. Now at this point, you don't have to keep holding forward. You just simply do that. And as soon as you fire your scorcher, you can stop holding forward. Next, you just want to charge your scorcher two more times. But what I realized a while back you don't actually have to charge it a lot you can just fire it twice really quickly again and then just simply jump and you will actually get into this little glitched area so you'll see exactly where to run here it's very simple to do so you run from here straight line just go over here now you need to be super careful i mean watch here i immediately dropped off i haven't done this glitch in a while and the only way to save yourself from dying is to is to actually fly over towards this pool because for whatever reason call of duty counts water as like infinitely going down like i don't know how to describe it the death the depth of a pool is like way way deeper than it actually is above ground so long story short aim for the pool if you fall but don't fall just please be careful while you're doing this glitch so anyway what you want to do is come over to this room here and what you're going to do instead of laying down because you can see i can't actually access it is you're going to take one of your blood burner keys and you're going to spawn the blood burner while you're standing towards the center of the room now i messed this up a couple of times so make sure that you're very careful with this portion of the glitch make sure you're standing about about right where I am and go ahead and spawn the blood burner and as you can see it almost spawned outside of the room so go ahead and spawn it and when you lay down you can actually access the blood burner which will then glitch you into the room now you may be asking yourself okay but can I even get out and the answer is yes you can actually unlock all these doors from the inside I've never done the Easter egg so maybe you spawn into this room and then you unlock the doors for your friends but what you're gonna do is you're able to access all of these chests now I highly suggest that you take the blood burner out of the room because what it's going to do is you won't actually jump on it accidentally jump on it and you also can have a clear line to get away from the mimic so one of these chests is going to have a mimic and if you have an upgraded scorcher it will be light work now since i'm a scaredy cat i kind of backed up and and did it but it was it was super super easy to actually kill him so as you can see i got a wonder Wolf, i got a couple of perks i got a self revive i got a minimum of seven thousand gold bars worth of money as well as some weapons so each game that you actually start this all you need is a scorcher and you can pretty much guarantee that you're going to get some rare loot to start the game but as you can see i already have unlimited essence you can check out that video in the description down below if you want to see my number one method for actually getting unlimited essence but that's about it guys that's how you can do this each and every game you can do this as a solo player or do it as a teammate on a team unlock the doors and let your friends grab the loot it does not matter now to end the game I would highly suggest that you go and do either the scorcher method for the tombstone duplication glitch because it's literally right there on the edge of the map or simply make your way over to the main portal now the main portal method obviously is the bad signal method typically I prefer this method but if you already have blood burner keys in your rucksack or you've already spawned a blood burner then you can actually go and do that version of the glitch and it's actually closer than the main portal so anyway it, the point I'm trying to make is you can do either of these methods and it won't really matter which ones that you do all I do 
is I just want you guys to make sure that you're actually doing the tombstone duplication glitch along with this because again, the blood burner is required for this. So if you simply have a slot in your rucksack, for example, I have legendary ether tools. I'm typically not using a normal weapon. I prefer the ray gun and the scorcher as my two weapons of choice. That's just my personal choice. So if you're like me and you like wonder weapons better than normal weapons, then you don't really need a legendary ether tool. So I'm able to sacrifice one of my rucksack, uh, you know, spots in my rucksack in order to actually have the blood burner key always there so again you brought in two blood burner keys but now you have one left over so when you do the tombstone duplication glitch you're going to come back into the game with two again and you see how that works right because the first time that you come into the game you either need one blood burner key and then duplicate it right through obviously what i'm doing right now which is the tombstone duplication glitch with the bad signal portal or alternatively you bring in two and then you can do the whole shebang and then just simply do the tombstone duplication glitch with your left over one so again this is pretty much the main method that i would highly suggest that you do in order to kind of duplicate your supplies and also get infinite essence if you don't want to do tier three contracts tier three contracts are fun and i I prefer that method obviously using the flamethrower you can check out the video in the description down below as well but with this method it's just kind of more laid back right everyone has their own play style and I know a lot of people complain sometimes of oh well I don't want to do tier 3 contracts for 30 minutes in order to get the unlimited essence well I got good news for you you don't have to you know this is a completely alternative more laid back method so it's really really cool and I highly suggest it the new Dark Ether is out with Season 2 Reloader, and I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how to do the new Tombstone Duplication Glitch through the Dark Ether as a solo player or as a team. I'm also going to be showing you guys how to duplicate your Elder Sigils so you can grind this out. Make sure you subscribe and like the video if it was helpful. Let's get into it. Now with this new Dark Ether glitch, you are going to be able to extract all of the schematics that you want from the Dark Ether. There's a ton of rare items and rare loot in general that you can get from the Dark Ether. It's important to keep in mind a couple of things though. Number one, there's a bit of high requirements for this. You need to complete the latest Easter egg, which I will put out a video on soon. Make sure, first of all, that you destroy your existing tombstone. This is very, very important because what you're going to do is you're going to create another one just like you do with the normal tombstone duplication, except we're going to make a few modifications to it. Also, this will be a little bit difficult for some of you to do, so I highly suggest that you practice. We will go over it in a minute. I will have raw footage for you guys so that you can actually physically watch me do this glitch it will be as little modified as possible so that you guys can actually re-watch it and learn what the timing is so let's get into it so first of all you're going to need an upgraded scorcher so you don't have to get it to level three i did this with a pack-a-punch level one scorcher let's get that upgraded and let's make our way over to the portal now there's a required setup and there's also a recommended setup. I'm gonna go over both of those with you now. Number one, the requirements for this glitch are pretty obvious. You're going to need an upgraded Scorcher, like I said, as well as an Elder Sigil and whatever items that you want to bring through the Dark Ether. What's going to happen is you're going to duplicate those items so that you can both use them in the Dark Ether as well as have them when you're back in game. But make sure that you have two Scorcher cases if you want to keep a Scorcher in your future tombstone the reason why I say this is obvious it's because you have to actually use a scorcher for this version of the tombstone duplication glitch for the recommended setup I just highly suggest that you guys go decked out so make sure that you have gold armor plates a large vest pack a punch level 3 weapons things of that nature now the real difficulty for this glitch is going to come with timing. A lot of you are going to have difficult with this if you had trouble with the solo tombstone duplication glitch. However, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do this and do it correctly. So you'll see here, I'm doing a dry run. I highly suggest that you do it because when you put in your Elder Sigil, if you do not accept the invite, then you will not use the Elder Sigil. So. I actually ran all the way over here. I fired my Scorcher and tested it out. I was able to get to the portal around eight seconds, which is plenty of time. Generally speaking, if you can get there with about six or seven seconds left of you entering the portal, like you are literally being teleported at six or seven seconds left on the vote counter, then you should be good. All right, so let's go over the timing for this glitch. So you're gonna see here, I'm firing my Scorcher up in the air twice. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do the Superman glitch properly for this glitch, because you're not gonna do it the typical way. 
However, once you get used to it, it will be very easy and you can duplicate items into the dark ether. So you're gonna see this is not my dry run. This is 100% legit. So this is the actual footage of me doing the glitch this morning. So let's watch here. I'm going to play this in slow-mo just to show you guys exactly how to do it. So let's replay that footage. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna fire the Scorcher up in the air twice, fully charged. You're just gonna hold the button until it fires twice. Very easy there. Then once you get to the apex or the top, you're going to pull your parachute and immediately cut it. Lastly, you're going to hold forward and charge your Scorcher up to 80%. All you're doing here is reactivating the Superman motion. You see right here, when you're falling out of the sky, just like you do in Warzone, what you're gonna do is just make sure that you trigger that again. Now, you don't need to do it anymore. You don't need to do it twice, three times. The distance between each portal, you only need to do it once. So you're gonna see me do it here again. I'm gonna fire fully twice pull and cut and then I'm going to hold forward while I fire up to 80%. Now 80% is relative anywhere around there should be good and what you're going to notice is you're going to fall very very short but you're going to fly directly into it so you can see here I do that boom I kind of mess up with the extra parachute there and you are through the portal. Now you're going to notice here I get through at about 8 seconds just like I was talking about before and if you get there around that time, you get to this wall around that time during your dry runs, consider yourself good to go. Now for the portal, it's important to remember that it costs 1000 essence. Now I highly suggest that you use code number 24 here. This will send you to the eastern side of the map. You can see it there. You can also use code number 19 though. A lot of people do use that one. That's the one that's by the beach or by the water. That's very, very easy to do. I highly suggest one or the other there. I don't suggest that you use number seven. That one takes a little bit longer. Number 24 can have a mercenary camp that shows up pretty much right on top of it however you show up on top of a water tower you will see that in a second and you can just float your way to the edge of the map so going over this location what you want to do for this one is you want to turn right immediately jump off and pull your parachute now what this allows you to do is you save about a second or two by flying towards the edge you're going to notice that the timer is almost out there on the left so i'm going to go ahead and pull up my menu now on pc you can accept at one second because you don't have to hold the button to vote yes however on xbox or ps5 i suggest that as it's switching from two to one is when you're holding it you're going to have slightly less time so go ahead and accept and what I suggest for timing this perfectly is when it hits seven seconds start sprinting into the edge and what's gonna happen is if you enter at exactly six seconds while the six is still up you are highly likely to keep your weapons every single time that I've done this I have kept all of my weapons my ether blade everything like that so not only will you be able to extract with schematics keep your tombstone you'll also be able to keep all of your weapons now with this glitch you don't have to close the game no one needs to close the game regardless if you're doing it solo or with a team but you're going to notice right here behind where you spawn at there's actually an exfil location hidden off so if you want to practice this glitch and just keep duplicating elder sigils then you will be able to repeat this glitch over and over again for practice i highly suggest that you do this if you have time on your hands because what this will allow you to do is get the timing down and then you can just start farming those schematics so it's very very easy to do that is the location of it and when you go to extract any of your schematics will obviously count because you are using a typical extraction method right and otherwise your tombstone will be in the main map so that's about it for the solo version let's go over how you would do it as a team so the rules change depending on how many players actually want to do this glitch. So I'm going to re-roll this footage and I'm going to explain to you guys exactly how you can do this as a team. But let me explain what I mean here. So if only one player on the team wants to actually do the tombstone duplication glitch through the dark ether, then they simply need to make sure that they step out at the six second mark whenever the portal is accepted. Just like you saw before, you can re-watch that film if you want to do that. But say that you have multiple players who want to do this glitch. What you're going to want to do there is have every single player queue up their yes vote. So for example, you'll see on the left here, it should say one votes needed. All right. So everyone should vote except for the actual 
player who is doing this portion of the glitch. So just make sure that you have one vote left or however many votes that you can have minimum before it actually triggers the timer. One player is going to need to do this portion of the glitch. So you'll see here, this is my dry run and I'll also show you guys the full run in a second. But one player is going to have to do this regardless. However, every single player does not have to do this. What they need to do is go ahead and teleport or get to the edge of the map and get ready to step out at six seconds. That's the portion of the glitch that they need to do. So literally only one player actually needs to do the flying glitch and everything like that, do the difficult part of this. The rest of the players can literally just sit on the edge of the map and step out at six seconds. And as long as each player who wants to actually do the tombstone glitch both has tombstone, is at the edge of the map, and steps out at six seconds, you are good to go. You don't have to close the game like I said before. All this glitch does is allows you to actually set a tombstone while going into the dark ether, keeping your weapons, allowing you to extract with those highly sought after new schematics. A new method for exfil boosting was found for Season 2 Zombies, and I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how you can do it today. Make sure that you do this before it gets patched if you want camos on your weapons because this is extremely useful, and you don't even need to go to the upper tiers to do it, but you can do this in Tier 2 and Tier 1. So let's get into the requirements for this glitch. So first and foremost, you need to obviously have an exfil site. Now this needs to be one of those typical helicopter exfils, so make sure that you find it. You can find these in Tier 2 and Tier 1. So once you've made your way over there, make sure that you start clearing out zombies. When you call in exfils, we all know that some zombies start to pop up. This is a normal amount of zombies, as you can see, just to gauge kind of if or not this is a glitch for some of you, because I know that some people struggle to actually see when things are the way that they should be or not in zombies, especially with all these glitches coming out. Trust me, it's going to be night and day different. So you can see here, I have maybe about like 20 zombies, maybe 15, somewhere around there. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hop onto the helicopter to trigger it to go a little bit faster so you hop on and hop off that'll kind of kill some time off of that timer and it will start taking off now this is about the right amount of zombies i would suggest that you pull them away from the helicopter you want to make sure that they are alive after the helicopter pulls off so again 10 plus zombies should be good don't have all of them there but you essentially want to wait for this helicopter to fly away now the best way to gauge this I found is while it's flying away just wait for the sound to actually go away. So once you start hearing it fade out you want to fire your scorcher up in the air and fly away. Now this is why a scorcher is useful. It's usually useful in most glitches and I highly suggest that you use it for this glitch. If you have a car I guess maybe that would work as well but the scorcher you can get out of the area fast and what you're actually glitching is how Modern Warfare 3 zombies despawns in PC. So if you fly away a full send on your scorcher i believe that should be enough you're pretty much timing to get back whenever the green smoke pops up now it doesn't need to be perfect i found i've showed up early i've shown up late it still works just as good so you're gonna see me fly back over here and let's see how it affects this spawn rate so once you get back to the site make sure that you call in the exfil immediately now what you're going to notice is going to happen is the zombie spawn rate will absolutely explode. So this is extremely useful if you're doing this solo. I would highly suggest that you do this solo. However, you can do it with a team. You all just need to do that flying away portion of this glitch where you fly away and leave 10, 10 zombies. You need to fly away at the same time. And the reason for that is pretty simple. So just as an example, let's say that a random player is still in this zone whenever I'm trying to do this glitch. If I try to leave 10 zombies behind, those 10 zombies won't actually despawn. Now the reason for this is pretty simple. You may have noticed it when you drive around the map fairly quickly. What you'll notice is that zombies will spawn in front of you. Not only is that as designed, that's also a way for the game to save resources on their servers. The whole reason for that is, why would you have zombies in an area where players aren't? That's how they clearly coded this game. That's the same reason why when you're flying with your parachute into certain areas, you'll notice zombies will then spawn whenever you land. And that's all what this has to do with. So you leaving those 10 zombies behind, they need to despawn and then you need to come back and trigger the exfil again. Now, if you repeat this process every single time, it takes about 30 seconds to fly away and fly back. It's extremely quick. So this is by far the best way to actually grind camos. You can get this amount of zombies constantly. It's actually a little bit intense. I would highly suggest that you do it in tier one if you don't have a ton of camos unlocked. Now, I know there are certain requirements for certain camos, but uh, most of them, uh, definitely a majority of them, you can do in tier one. So
shirt and I'm about to show you guys one of the coolest glitches that has come out so far so first of all if you haven't already watched it make sure you watch my tombstone duplication glitch video I highly suggest that you do this every single game because it's going to be needed if you want to always have a scorcher available that will be the first requirement for this glitch so make sure you go ahead and bring a scorcher into the game now this glitch can be done solo or with the team it does not matter but this is a solo glitch after all you can do this on your own each player can do this at the same time and what this will allow you to do is go across the map within seconds it is very very quick it's honestly a very impressive glitch so what i want you to do first is make sure you have that scorcher equipped you're also going to need a flawless ethereum crystal or the essence to upgrade your weapon to level three you're going to need this at max pack a punch level all right, so once you found yourself to a flat area, just not anywhere near skyscrapers, you'll see why in a second. Make sure that you apply your Pack-A-Punch level three crystal before you actually do this glitch, or just use the essence on a Pack-A-Punch machine to level up your gun to level three. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this correctly and how to do it wrong. So first of all, I, what you wanna do to actually get into the glitch is fire your scorcher and continue to hold the button until you fired it three times. And what's gonna happen now after this latest patch is you're actually gonna be floating in the air like you are in Warzone. Now this isn't all to the glitch. You need to do this correctly or else you will down yourself because there are a lot of hills on this map. So let's go through it now. So the mechanics of this glitch are pretty simple. When you hit the top of the curve, so to speak, whenever you're flying up in the air, you will actually see that here. So watch, I float up, 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 and here I go start floating down. As soon as you start floating down, you wanna pull your parachute, cut it, and then hold the button to fire. And what's gonna happen is you only need to fire it once each time, and you essentially will keep recharging. But what you wanna make sure that you do at the very least is wait until your scorcher has charged about three ticks. So let's watch me do this a little bit better because this was me getting used to it. So let's watch. All right, so here I am at the exact opposite end of the map. And what I'm gonna be showing you guys here is I literally don't even hit the ground, but I'm also gonna show you how fast you can get across the entire map with this glitch. So what you wanna do again is wait until you get to the actual top before you start floating down then you want to pull your parachute like i do here cut it immediately hold the button and you will continuously fly through the map now i would highly suggest that you let the curve kind of happen a little bit like this so that you're almost like hopping across the map like you're a giant right think of it that way because that will get you the fastest times across the map i highly suggest doing that don't just pull at the top pull a little bit after once you start getting used to this but i would highly suggest if you don't want to die at all just follow those simple instructions Pull as soon as you get to the top, cut, and then fire your scorcher off again and just keep holding it like that. Now, when you're floating up in the air, like right here, you don't need to be holding the scorcher button. You just need to do it as soon as you cut because your scorcher will slowly come out and you want to make sure that your player is firing that sucker immediately. So if you guys today, we have an unlimited XP glitch that is very easy to do and it will help you get all of your Borealis camo challenges done. Now you can sit in this XP glitch and just be AFK if you want and only click one button every few minutes. I'm gonna show you guys the absolute optimal way of doing this glitch and why it is so important that you do this before they patch it. Now this is located in the tier three zone, so make sure that you gear up and let's go over some of the requirements to this glitch. All right, so number one, we are in the tier three zone and what you're gonna need is either a spore control contract or an outlast contract. And I highly suggest that you go with the outlast contract, which we will go through in a minute. But make sure that you have whatever weapons that you wanna level up, as well as the gear that you need. You will be able to pick up ammo from the zombies in this glitch, so don't worry about that. As long as you have the guns that you would like to level up, you are good to go. Now, the only other thing that I suggest is that you grab a dog bone if you want to do the AFK. So again, the AFK version of this glitch definitely requires a dog. However, if you don't want to do the AFK glitch and you want to get all your camo challenges, you do not need a dog bone. You just need an upgraded weapon. Whether you do the duplication glitch, which I'll include in the description below for money, and you just simply upgrade your weapons immediately and head to the red zone, you can get all your camo challenges that way. But it is located in the courtyard as shown here. You can see my green dot in the middle of the screen. So make sure you go there. This is the only location in which you can do it. And what you're going to want to look for is an excavator on the edge of the building. Building. And I'm going to show you in a second what you need to do to get this to work properly because there is a little bit of canceling contracts and a little bit of trickery that you may need to go through. So let's go through that now on how to actually do this glitch. 
All right, so you want to make sure that you have a tier three outlast contract, like I said, and you want to make sure that you are at the larger courtyard. You'll notice that this courtyard right here is not the one that you need. I'm telling you, this location is not what you want. If you get the outlast contract and it gets pointed there, what you want to do is pull up your map and then hold whatever button is at the top right to cancel the contract like I just did. And what's going to happen is momentarily there should be a separate contract that shows up on the map. All right, so I'm not sure if this is the exact place that it always shows up, but you can notice the excavator below me. This is the correct courtyard. You've already seen it on screen, but I will show it again. And so where you're going is to grab this Outlast contract that's nearby, and it will pop up in that building in the correct larger courtyard. So once you get over to the Outlast contract, you wanna quickly activate the PND device and then run up to this doorway at the top of the boxes right behind it. And what you're gonna do is step in and out until you get above 15%. And the reasoning behind that is simply that it limits zombie spawns up until then. So once you get that up to a little bit over 15, run it up there and then step out and let it run to zero. Now once it's ran out, what you wanna do is hold to cancel the contract, which can be found on your map. It's very, very easy. Once you've canceled that, make sure that it's at 0% when you do so. And the last step to this glitch is you want to jump under this excavator inside of the courtyard and the zombies won't be able to hit you. And the reason why you wanna combine these two things is because when you get Outlast up past 15%, the maximum amount of zombies that will spawn will continue to spawn. And you'll notice here, they will continue to flow in. Now, one of the best parts about this glitch is that you can get those bounty contracts and you can actually kill the abominations with ease and get all of the rare drops in this glitch as well. Just make sure that you're laying down if you're going to do that. But there are two main methods that you can actually apply to this glitch. So let's go through both of those right now. So the first method I'm gonna show you guys is the AFK XP method that you can do with this glitch. And what you're gonna need is a dog bone for the pet dog as well as healing aura which you see at the bottom right of my screen and this will allow you to not have to click anything except for every maybe five minutes and otherwise your pet dog will literally kill everything around you so what you want to do is obviously spawn that dog do the outlast glitch that i just showed you come under the excavator just for safety and simply heal your dog because every single time that your dog gets a kill it adds to your healing aura and you'll see this in a second I will heal my dog and then after that he will gain at least about like a fourth of his health so it is very easy to do you can see right there you just apply the health to your dog he will keep killing you can see the XP just racking up and with this outlast glitch you just have a stream of zombies constantly coming and if you have the ether knife you will never run out of ammo even in this where no zombies are coming near you so the second method I'm gonna show you guys is obviously the camo method. You wanna make sure that one, you're bringing in whatever weapon you want to level up, as well as upgrading said weapon to whatever level that you need for tier three, which I suggest double pack a punch. It works the quickest and it just allows you to level up your weapon as quickly as possible, as well as get all the kills that you need for Borealis camo.